Pioneers in innovation, unique in every action. We promise you to bring in a game changer every week. Today's game changer has 35 years of corporate experience. The speciality is it being in one company. Introducing to you none other than Mr. Kumar Samarasingha, Director Marketing, Singha Sri Lanka. Welcome to the show, Mr. Kumar. 35 years of experience is not at all an easy task. You need a lot of patience, a lot of courage. Let's step by step talk about it. Let's have a major throwback beforehand to your small days. How was it all about? Uh, well, Ajip, I think uh, if I talk about my small days, I think it is something I can be very happy because uh, I am not from Colombo. My small days we spend in Gaul. Actually, it is the village called Badegama, that is the little interior, and I belong to a family with seven siblings. I think uh, I have uh, three brothers and sisters. And with the experience of the big family and the uh, village environment, and of course, uh, after that, when we start in our studies, we had to move out to a little bit of uh, town area in ourselves. But I think uh, we really enjoy our experience and what we enjoy there in the small days. I think it's a sweet memories we have in all the time. Even today, when we get together as a family, we go to our village, I think that's the sweetest experience and the memories what we have. So you're the eldest uh, for seven siblings, is it? I'm seven, uh, second in my family. I have an elder sister and five youngest. <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, let's talk a bit. You, you said that you come from Gaul and how was your school life all about? Yeah, uh, because uh, I belong to like a family of seven and my parents are teachers. I think at that time that was the best profession I think you, they had. In my school days, I started in Gaul Mahinda College and that is where I had my education throughout. And uh, I would say once again after the uh, starting from the small days, I think the best time in our life is the school time. Right. Uh, were you were you a mischievous kid by then or a silent, calm character? Yeah. I'm not a silent, calm character, but <laughs> I'm not so mischievous too. Because uh, as you said, like uh, when you are in the family of big family and the brother for three sisters and three brothers, automatically you develop some discipline within yourself because uh, parents taught us what not to do, basically. And of course, uh, it's our responsibility, and even when you go to school, to maintain certain discipline. It is not like uh, you go and uh, sit there in the morning and till 1.30 you study and come back. But as usually, like any other boy who enjoy their school career, do whatever the possible uh, mischievous things within the rule book of the school, I think we did it. All right, that's interesting. Uh, let's talk a bit about extracurricular activities. Were you good in extracurricular activities at school or it's only studies? Uh, yeah, I think that's one area I can recall very well because at the school level, I was very much involved with the many of the sports. Uh, from the small days, I, of course, uh, I played cricket for the school. Then I was participating in athletics to the uh, Sri Lanka schools level. I played soccer for the school. I did swimming for the school. I did cadeting and many of school sports. Because in our time, I think uh, we are always looking at Apart from the studies, how can you enjoy your school career? Whatever the way, especially the sports. At that time, I think uh, as a young boy, 
We like to play every game what is available in the school. I think I was a little fortunate. I was fairly good at some of those things, so I managed to play for the college. Just to interrupt you for a moment. Uh, today you don't see that flexibility and the par parents today they restrict the kids a lot. They restrict like if they try to do two or three sports they say no you have to have you have to do studies it's difficult to manage. What is your thought on this? Is that a fair thing or is it the nature which is? I think uh, what I looked at uh, it is not the correct thing to do. I think today parents want every one of their kids to be a professional, especially at the early stages or the like school day. Parents want their children to be doctors, engineers mainly. And everybody wants to be in that. So the parents, or sometimes I would say, parents want to send their children or get their children to achieve what parents fail to do so. So at the same time, of course, the today environment is changed. Exactly. So then, I think I don't blame parents, but I think it's the wrong thing to do that because you need to you need to allow children to enjoy their life. To to be comfortable with what they're doing. Is yes. It? Now, if you looked at the, because uh, there are famous saying that. Most of the top leaders in the society today, they are they never in the front row of their school. They were never in their front rows. Right. Yeah. So that means, it, no, totally involved with the sports or the uh, uh, academic, right. also will not make you a comfortable or the professional or the good citizen. You have to balance it out. I think parents guided you need, you have to guide them but you can't direct them to do only, okay, do this, like we. And Mr. Kumar, uh, we still, we hear that people see you at the Rajagiri jogging track every morning, which is something rare in a personality who is in the corporate world because it's 8.30 to 5 and they go home, sleep and the routine continues. But you manage to be at the jogging track every morning is that what makes work easy for you or like what do you see like fitness in in a fitness perspective do corporates like who are in the corporate world require fitness as an aspect to make work easy uh, <laughs> yes i think uh, i didn't notice I, I didn't thought that people noticed me but uh, to keep fitness yourself I think the most important thing what I believe in our level because uh, I, we go to office at 7, 8, 9 or whatever and work till late but unless you are physically fit, you are free of sickness and all those things, you are not free to think, free to do your work and most important what I believe is that when I go there for a jog, of course I go with my wife at there, it is not only the physical fitness what I looked at. When you go there, you relax yourself. You talk to each other and very like uh, you'll have a good chat for a hour while you are walking around, jogging around in that. At the same time, I think you like tend to forget most of the hectic stuff and be little light stuff and all those things. But most important thing, you have to be fit to do, your, especially in the, your mind should be relaxed. I think it's not only the body, your mind relaxation comes with that. I think that is what I believe. It's a good way to start your day, is it? Uh, it is, like, because you are very fit or the, we are very relaxed after the 45 minutes or one hour jogging out. That's something interesting, like to keep yourself fit no matter how busy you are. Spend some time to like to, to concentrate on your health as well. Mr. Kumar jogs every morning at the Rajagiri jogging track. That's something we can take out from his, uh, his daily routine. We spoke about sports and fitness. 
Now, a bit of about studies. How did you uh, do your studies when you come up the ladder, Mr. Kumar? Uh, yeah, I think uh, if I go back to my younger days, I joined Singer 35 years ago. Right? And uh, there, I was not fully qualified like today. Right? But uh, what I felt was, I cannot complete my studies and come and start working. So I think the most successful thing in my life, I managed to do my sports, I played a little bit of cricket and studies and did my work. So what is most important there, while you are working, you, you have find a time, to, you can find a time to study. At the same time, I think uh, especially as a marketer or as a marketing student, when you go and learn something yeah. and when you go back to the office, similar things you are facing in your real life. Yeah, let's, let's talk about uh, it in detail at yeah. the third segment. And how did you manage sports and studies alongside when you were in school? You were a big sports personality. And was it a boost for you to get into Singer? Singer then also it was a very large organization. Was it uh, a major fact for you to get in? Because you balanced both together. Yeah, if I uh, look back, I joined Singer uh, for a, I thought, to stay for a little while. Because at that time, Singer was forming a mercantile cricket team. So, I, was, I joined with Singer to, to play for the cricket season and go back and continue You never study. thought that you'll be the director of yeah. marketing? No, never. <laughs> I never had that in mind. Actually, I thought I will work for about three to four months and after the cricket season, go back to continue my studies. Of course, I thought uh, by uh, that's the best move I had. After joining, I thought while I was working, of course, my uh, Mr. Hema Kamarasuri, former <coughs> chairman of Singer, who was at that time financial control, he was my boss. He said, why do you want to go back? While you are working, you can do your studies. That's how balancing out it sense. Uh, if you have a proper time, people talk so much about the time management. It is much more than if you prioritize your things. That's so how you, you manage your them. You have to stop somewhere and say, okay, now I have to change my. It is like what I call the tuning a radio. Absolutely. Right? You should be able to tune to the different lines and ha enjoy everything and the change over time should be very, very little. Exactly. That's uh, Mr. Kumar Samagar Singha, Director of Marketing, Singha Sri Lanka. It's going to be an interesting program today at the Game Changer. Let's go to a short commercial break and come back soon. Welcome back. You're watching the Game Changers on Art Television. Today's Game Changer, as we all know, Mr. Kumar Samarasinghe, Director of Marketing, Singer Sri Lanka. Mr. Kumar, 35 years is a long time. You need a lot of patience, as I said in the beginning. Uh, we can call it corporate patience, if I'm not mistaken. You get a lot of pressure. You get to work with different people. How did you manage to be there for 35 long years? Yeah, I think uh, I agreed with you. It's a very, very difficult task to be in one place, especially in the corporate world, that was looking at always to perform better. I think uh, what I could manage at that time, because I had a lot of patience. At the same time, yes, many a times, I would say, in the early part of my career, I felt that it's too much for me to take it. But still, go back and think, should I take a decision which will, how it impact on me?
but i never looked at the short term benefits when whenever the problem arises even sometime when we are getting pressurized on that because that's a part of the corporate world the way it works but if you can manage your things if you don't get upset or you should not what i always believe in when the problems comes you should not react you have to respond for that if you try to try to react on certain things especially which is not in your favor you are the ultimate loser so best thing when something goes against you you have to find a way to respond for that the other thing what we learn from the school especially what to bring it up or from your religion your culture all those things your background you what you learn from your parents exactly all those things it matter but in the when you come to the as you said like a difficult 35 years i think if you have a commitment if you are not looking at your personal benefit always or if you looked at the company as a somebody who will support you always and believe that believe your organization believe yourself i think you cannot uh, go wrong exactly so uh three and a half decades is a long time you would have had ample experience being at singer only which is your very very first job so what is the biggest challenge you were you were the sales director before you become the marketing director you would have had a lot of challenges and milestones to achieve like you were a part of milestones in singer so what is the most unforgettable challenge that you faced uh yeah i think if i <clears throat> talk about the challenges what i had uh, especially yes i was at marketing i was a marketing manager then i was a deputy marketing director one day former chairman mr amarsuri called me and said you have to take over sales because as a sales organization right in year 2008 2009 period i think the, all the companies were, had a bad patch just before the, the war was over because company is going through a little bit of difficult period because everybody the economy was not favorable so he called me and he wanted me to take over sales division i thought that was the toughest challenge i had because if things are going smoothly it's very difficult to take it forward but what i thought this is the difficult period if i had to be successful this is the best period when things are going smoothly you don't have to show, do much thing to take but when you are in the bad situation if the company needs your support and company need is not doing that well in sales i thought this is the time for me to turn around this business with as management request because he had the trust on me and this given this very toughest job as you know singer work with right from the country and it was the situation was not favorable i think that is the toughest task i had but i have fulfilled that to the since we spoke about your 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 career like the, the where you started from as a sales representative to the marketing director today people find shortcuts like they do a mba at the age of 26 and they try to come and sit at a managerial position or a director's position do you think that it is something uh, like we can, can we like accept it yeah i think the, there's two ways to look at it today all these youngsters they are looking at enhancing their knowledge get the opportunities are much greater than our time but i would advise anybody in that way so while you are having practical experience let to improve your knowledge because always this two goes side by side because this is if i had to tell this is how i became successful in that sales career because i had the marketing knowledge and I had a field experience because I was a district manager, brand manager, marketing manager, and many areas I had. So today, what I think, 
if somebody wants to be successful in that, you should continue your studies and your career or the work together. Absolutely. Otherwise, by the time you are fully qualified, you are only having the theoretical knowledge. But there, once you try to practice it or go into the practice, you are lacking something. So you tend to fail because you don't know what is the grassroots knowledge experience is there. That was that. That's cl clear. What, in your perspective, in a nutshell, what's marketing all about? Well, I think the, it's a big story if I write in the many people that said in the different, different way. But I think still I'm learning my marketing. Right? It's a never ending marketing, I believe. Because it, when you, uh, what I think is marketing is somebody satisfied with needs or we try to help someone to satisfy their needs. Of course, it's when you come to the marketing, marketing communications comes in a very big way. But uh, like a simple example, if I can tell you, I think somebody, some of you all may have seen that. Now, there's a beggar who's sitting on the road saying that I'm blind, please help me. Many people by, passed him and some people gave one or two dollars and all those. Things. Then somebody had changed, took that board and put something different. Then after a few minutes, Everybody who are bypassing is put some coins into that. So when you look back, what the guy who had written in that beggar's board, but it, it earlier it was said, I am blind, please help me. The second guy had written there, said, today it's a beautiful day, wow. but I cannot see. So yes. that is all about marketing, communication and everything, how you put across things better for everybody to get their concern. I think it's crystal clear what's it all about. Today people, uh, Mr. Kumar, misunderstand the terms marketing, advertising and sales. What are the three different terms? What do they mean? People think advertising is marketing, but it's not. People think sales is marketing, but it's not. What, what is your feel on this? Any comments? I think I'm not qualified enough to give a very, I think, ideal definition on that. Just, just okay. a brief. Yeah. Yeah. But all these things, you cannot isolate those things separately. The marketing, advertising and sales. Because all these things should go hand in hand. If you advertise, if the marketing does not do their job properly, no point advertising. Because if you talk about the advertising, we try to understand what the problem for the salespeople face. Now as a salesman, we have a product. But if it is not selling, we have to find a marketing way of selling that product or reach the customer what you have. And because prior to that, in marketeers, they go and analyze and see what's the customer behavior pattern. Where are customer is looking for, what the technological terms, that we are, how is the company behavior or the social behavior, all those things, once the marketeer understands it, then the production people come and give the product. Or they go and convey that, okay, this is the market demand on it. Exactly. Then the product comes into that, the salesman is there so much the advertising but salesman is having a problem say you have a product but customer is not aware of it then advertising coming to that try to find a solution for the salesman is why customers should take this product or how you are communicating it to that because isolation you can't take one by one this is a combination of all okay. three now apart from that you have to need the finance also in, the, in production all this is the one thing, things in the one basket. If you take one out and try to do something, it's not easy. Exactly. Uh, do we, uh, moving on, do we Sri Lankans use or like practice as we, as we talk about sales and marketing, digital marketing, 
and e-commerce do they use it the right way and as we see Singa is not much active on all this why is that well uh, as a total Sri Lankan we are still not very much in the e-market but that is the way forward I think I would say we are like we are behind in that segment but even if you go to the closest countries like India I think they are more active than the Sri Lankan. Sri Lankan consumer is still looking at the traditional ways of it. Even the marketeers are looking at just in the traditional way. But we need to change much faster than the way it's going on. Because we at Singer also realizes we need to be much more active in this area. Because when time to come, the traditional advertising traditional way of communicating will change. It will be within a year or within two years or three years, you never know. But we need to do that much as faster than anyone else. Do you think that uh, other players in the market, uh, small uh, ones who do these electronics would would like be active more on social media and capture that market yeah, before single? It is like they are active, but you say social media in Sri Lanka, it's very, very, oh, they were going very fast, right? Yeah. You can remember some of the things, it's even today, in, in, in political scenario, I think it's more active than anything else. Exactly. So, in the, as a marketeers, it's a big company, it's like us, or the, we need to get things much more faster. Yeah, small timers are already successfully doing it. But unfortunately, I think we were a little late as a whole country. As a senior personality in the corporate world, do you see or do you think that they're doing it right? I mean, about the small players. Uh, uh, some are doing it right, but some are not doing, I would say. But it's good to start with some men. But then, some are doing it a very unethical way, but some are doing it in a professional way. But we have a talent to reach that gap. I think all companies, everybody should pay little more attention, little more concern about this area because that is the way forward. Because as Sri Lankans are in our, we feel like we are very, when you try to sell a product, we still try to have a touch and feel way. You want to go and see the product, you want to have touch the product and talk to them and all those things. But it's much more than that. So I think Sri Lanka also, I'm sure within the next couple of years, it will change into the next level. I'm sure we have a capability and uh, we have a... We are, we are in the process of yes, adopting. Right, yes. yeah. uh, it would be definitely interesting to listen to the story of Singer. Our viewers will be much interested to what It all started in 1877, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in the Petar market as a little shop so you definitely know about this a lot more than the others in the industry or in the organization what is the story of Singer in a brief yeah uh, Singer started 160 years ago in Sri Lanka 145 years ago in Peta today I think the Singer we are very proud to say the most popular brand in this country and if you looked at the way back from the 70s when our economy opens up. I think Singer Sri Lanka took a bold decision to di uh, diversify our operating. It was a single sewing machine. The company who sold only a sewing machine. So, early, th that time, Singer expand its offering to the multi-products. Multi Singer sewing machine to the refrigerator, television, to the audio sets and all these things. Then, way back in 2000, was around 2000, Singer expanded its business to the multi-brand. Earlier it was the single brand, single product, mm -hmm. then single brand, multi-product. Now we are multi-brand, multi-product. I think Singer had a bold decision to have our own competitive product. As example, we have a Singer refrigerator. This is refrigerator, those are two of our brands. Now we are having another seven competitive brands within our showrooms 
for customers to have a choice. Seven competitive brands. Yes. How do you like uh, place these products in order? Uh, well, it's a choice to the customer. Now say it's seven, only the refrigerators. Today, Singer is selling 53 different brands. Out of that, about 45 is international brands. And we have our own brands, house brands, and competing to all these giants in the marketplace because we have the capacity and the trust on, on our own brand that they will, at this, especially, we can uh, fight with all these competitors and still keep more than 50% of our share with our house brand. I think that's the capacity of Singer. This becomes even more interesting to talk about a company which is old, which is 145 years old. And Mr. Kumar, most importantly, you being 35 years in this company, it's even more interesting to listen to you. But time interrupts. Let's go to a short commercial break and come back soon. Welcome back. You're watching the Game Changers on our television. Today's Game Changer is Mr. Kumar Summer Singha, Director of Marketing, Singer Sri Lanka. We've, we are in the third segment. So, Mr. Kumar, over 35 years, you would have seen different aspects and the drastic change in the consumer buying behavior. So, your comments on this. Yeah, I think uh, when today, if I looked at, the consumer is very knowledgeable. Especially the uh, world is open for the consumer, especially technology and a uh, lot of things are there for them to learn about the product and also. At the same time, the lifestyle of the consumer also changes, rapidly changing. because. Those days, as example, if you buy a piece of furniture, you expect that to use for the next 25 years or at least 10 years. Today, it's different. Those days, say 20 years ago, if you buy a television, uh, consumer expect that to work for 10 years or more than that. But today, the technological changes and the awareness and the convenience of these products a change the consumer behavior. When you said technological changes, like uh, in what, like we see a lot of technology coming in to this small nation. Singa being a global brand, what is your feel on the technological change? You see uh, a TV coming up this month and within three months it's changing again. Is it like, is it like a challenge for you why you come up with a big marketing campaign for this 15-inch LED latest TV and then in six months you'll have to change it all again in three months sometimes. What is your thought on this? Yeah, well as a marketeers, I think uh, we help to understand better about those changes and how things are changing in the world. So as a marketeers, we have no option when the new product comes in, we have to take it otherwise you are behind the rest. So anytime you have to see what will be in for the future. You cannot sit back and sell what you get. Is it like uh, advertising cost rises? Like it goes up very soon. You'll have to so show a big uh, amount in your budgets. Yeah, it, it's such a very, I think it's the biggest challenge to, today you are faced yes. with, but you have to live with it. Just because you have a, a big advertising campaign lined up, if the technology changes, if new products come into the market, uh, you cannot continue with that. And the consumer today, it's very much knowledgeable what's happening in the world. But I say the other part of the technological changes, now say as an example, uh, television sector. Today you are getting LED TVs and uh, so on. And with that, you have an advantage for the customer because it's a smart TV coming in, already it's in the market. 
instead of a uh, computer you can use all those things for the tele uh, the smart tv what you are looking at so it's like a refrigerator you are coming with the new uh, gas exactly what my uh, next question is about product diversification yes uh, can we relate that as well yeah so now say few years ago i will take in our company took a decision to introduce a new gas that's called the r600 to our refrigerators manufactured in sri lanka that is the first time entire southeast asia is having a, that kind of product it's which is singer. it's singer it's in sri lanka made in sri lanka singer and sicil refrigerators and that gives almost 50% of power saving for the consumer i think with the technological change we have to give a consumer the reason why he should change into this thing otherwise because you are you just cannot say this is a new model also always features versus benefit both you have to convey to a consumer and then they will buy product from you and at the same time the service aspect also come into the very very important way because today if i say technology hardly different with anything because it is uh, available to each and every one okay. but the market here who gives you the best service to the consumer is the one who will survive in the market but not the person who but has given the cheapest product you are referring product. to after service yeah it is not only the after sales at the pre sales also so if you if the customer walked into your showroom if you don't give the correct product correct information for him to help his buying decision i think it's also important if you bluff somebody at that point just to get a sake of sale there's no reason for you to survive in the market exactly advertising uh singer is like in almost all 21 million people's hearts how you would have definitely been a part of this reaching out all the people out there so how did your what was your tagline or what was your motive to to like enter each and every one of them you know even if you ask do you know singer from a little kid they know how did this all happen yeah i think it is like a 160 years of good work done by everybody who's involved with singer but today if i'm looking at our advertising it's to i think you have to be truthful to your customer because see, our motto is tr- trusted excellence trusted excellence. in singer is we call ati vishishta vishwasa so i think the sri lankan consumer is having about singer i think we have to live up to that expectation of our customer you you've taken the message trusted excellence so that you think that it is why people like singer and they yeah because they know that this is a genuine company who will always deliver product at the reasonable price and look after consumer throughout their life it is a strong message to all the entrepreneurs out there and people who are into the business world and people who are into sales and marketing to give a strong message out there and be truthful with your brand is that what you're trying to say sir exactly because you can't fool the customer ultimately if you try to do that you become a fool <laughs> all right that's interesting and singer uh singer sponsors a lot of sports activities is it a marketing gimmick <laughs> that you're using sir certainly not because if you know singer is always behind sports sponsorships the singer if you go back when sri lanka won the world cup singer was the sponsor but when we started that sponsorship for cricket sri lanka was in the very very bad situation but we thought as a good corporate citizen this is the time we should support that at the same time today we are sponsoring school cricket I don't know whether you are aware of it. I think that is the biggest tournament in the whole world. Right? Nine hundred schools playing, about six thousand matches, twenty-five thousand kids participate in that tournament. 
it is a lot of money for the association. School Cricket Association run that. We take over the sponsorship, sponsorship. of that from the under 13 to the 19. And the Sri Lankan rugby, school rugby. Then the, we support many other schools like a hockey, netball, and the sports meets. And we, at, at, uh, I think, uh, you maybe not, we are not talking much about it and we don't shout about it. Uh, we support. Do you think that you have a lot of return on investment on that? Well, that is for the future. I think that is a moral responsibility of a company because we earn, or uh, as a business organization, we do our business with the Sri Lankan community. In return, we should give something back to them for a long-term uh, benefit. Definitely. So, so like by sponsoring this, you all don't expect anything in return as a company or like you're, you're like something more related to CSR or something like that? Yeah. It is not CSR. If I say that we don't expect anything, I'm lying. Yes, we are expecting because that's a brand building exercise. But we are not expecting anything in the short term benefit or sponsor in that we are not really looking at the commercial benefit for today. But we go into the heart of Sri Lankans. I think if we are there, then, then they want to buy because they, they know Singer is having all these stuff. So when they want need the rises, Singer will be the first to pick up. Exactly. Uh, so uh, as an individual who excelled in sales and marketing, I would definitely ask this from you. For a person who is watching this program, um, who wants to be a marketer one day, what is your message? Like, some people are confused, like with qualifications like CIM and bachelors in marketing coming into place. What is uh, what what to choose and how to do it? When it's marketing, we definitely know that the experience by selling which matters even uh, like when you're going up the ladder. So your message on this? Sir. Yeah, my message for the, all these young marketeers who want to join with marketing also. There's no shortcut to become a successful marketeer or in a career. But say, having said that, because marketing or the sales, I believe is the most enjoyable, like people who can enjoy their career can, while they're working. So what I say, do your basics, stick to your basics, and you need to study the market or the, your theoretical, you have to have your theoretical knowledge and go down to the marketplace, experience it, put it both together and once you are qualified, you should have your experience behind you to be a successful marketer. Because unless, if you are just sit on the books and try to be very qualified, by the time you reach your, get your qualification, you don't have anything experience behind you. So there's a tend to make mistakes are much more greater. So what I said, it's a very good career for anyone to do it. Of course, you know, it's a very lucrative area too, right? Exactly. And today, I'm not putting any other uh, the professions down, but if you are a good marketer, the demand for you is very much more than anything else. And you can have a good life and you can enjoy your life and you can be a good citizen for the country and you can have a good family. That's, that's, I think it's a very strong message out there. Mr. Kumar, uh, sh how should a school leaver find or like choose a job? Maybe uh, he can come from a different uh, background at school, uh, but how should he pick? How should he identify his talents and the sectors that he should go on? I think uh, today most of the people who come to marketing because they have a passion. So you need you have you should be prepared to set out a little bit in the early part of your life. But that will continue to that. That will become a habit. Because you can't sit in one place and do marketing, or you if you want. But what I my advice for the all youngsters who want to be a marketer is choose this. Be carefully what, where do you want to. And if you have passion to go out and do some work, if you want, if you can, if you have the multitask, 
and if you want to be a successful in your life and if you want to enjoy your life i think the marketing is good that of course there are so many places in this country institutes and organization who will help to enhance your knowledge with that just one thing coming into my mind someone should would be like a great personality in sports and he's also a good marketer uh, which career that he should pick or he should uh, he might be stuck at this moment a yeah, lot of youth watch this program yeah, so i think the what the happened is in the sports especially i'm going back a little bit right if you are very good at sports right what is the chances of representing the country you have to evaluate yourself self evaluation yeah then you have to take okay if i am not good at to reach at that point then don't give up totally but try to get into this area too as a marketer now see if i somebody asks you how i manage with my like a pressure situation i think this is something i as a sportsman what i develop like if you are a cricketer if you go into bat there are 11 guys try to kill you or get you out and two umpires also eager to wait, waiting to give, send you out send you out so if you have a if you develop yourself to stand in that kind of situation it is not for cricket that is why many companies look for sportsmen to get because you know they have the power to stand alone right i think it's 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 very clear and it was very interesting talking to you mr kumar uh, your general message to all 21 million people out there they would love to listen to you because you have had a lot of corporate patience and an individual who who who, is, who should be respected in the industry so as a respected personality your message would definitely affect the youth and the younger generations who are watching this program yeah, well i what i would say for the any youngsters you must have a passion to do whatever the area you are in because you should do with whole hearted so that's the, my bit of advice to anybody who wants to be in the marketing or anywhere if you are in, want to be in marketing of course never sacrifice your personal agenda in the in other words what i say your family i'll say any any successful guy should have a successful family life your kids your wife your parents everything body should be looked after and you have to have a balance in your life if you try to work without any of those things you're not going to achieve anything in your life so that is my thing you have to balance it your life but never look for a shortcut but there are so much of opportunities out in the market only you can prove that if you are not suitable because there's nothing as whole world is for you there's opportunities are there you have to work towards that because it's so easy to reach anything if you have a commitment and if you work for it Also Mr Kumar uh what is your thought and feel about the game changers program I think this is something new at the same time to come and share some of our knowledge or the experience what do I say and if we can give it I think this gives to some uh I think you give a different way and try to put across to the people or the especially the youngsters who wants to be a success in their whatever the career i think this kind of programs will bring lot of value into them because rather than today they all the, our youngsters they are at times they are confused which way to choose and uh, it's our job to tell them there are so many avenues for them so many ways they can come up with their life and once you do your basic and correctly there's a so much of opportunities lying out in the marketplace for a successful person thank you very much uh, mr kumar for sparing your valuable time here with us we wish you all the very best with your future endeavors that's the end of the game changers with mr kumar samarasinghe 
Director of Marketing, Singer Sri Lanka. So as always, we promise you to come back next week with another exciting game changer. Till then, goodbye.